Hey, Hawthorne Bears, I've got another number estimate mystery for you. So get your number detective hats on. As always, I want to thank Steve White Borney for putting these resources together. You can find out more of his uh, games like Splat and Esta Mysteries on www.stevewhiteborney.com. Uh, you can also find them posted on my website, www.mrpythemathguy.com. So today we're going to do the return of the readings. And this one's geared probably towards grades uh, two to four. Uh, maybe uh, first we'll also enjoy it. Um, so go ahead and get your estimation hats on. Let's get going. I am going to just stop my video here so you can focus on the picture. Look at all those rings. How many rings do you think there are there? Go ahead and estimate. And remember, we estimate with our eyes, not our fingers. And there are going to be some rings there that you may not be able to see. So I want you to estimate. How many rings do you think there are? Go ahead and write that number down or tell somebody in the room what your estimate is. Uh, we're going to go through and I'm going to give you some clues. And as we um, get new clues, we can fine tune our estimates to get, uh, to get closer and closer to how many rings there actually are. So let's go ahead and get started with clue number one. And there's going to be five total clues. So clue number one says, the answer is less than 50. So I put a 60 chart up here. So if the number is less than 50, which number should we cross out? We definitely want to cross out this row. Would we cross out 50? Yeah, if the number is less than 50, we should eliminate 50 as well. So let's go ahead and get rid of those numbers. And that leaves us the numbers one through 49. Now, did we just cross out your estimate? Or was your original estimate higher than 60? If so, go ahead and update your estimate based on the new information you have. That's one of the things that, that mathematicians can do is as we get more information, we can use it to update our estimates. So go ahead and update your estimate. All right, let's take a look at clue number two. The answer is an odd number, like one, three, five, seven. Circle all the odd numbers. Now we're not gonna circle them on here, but what we could do is cross out the opposite of an odd number. So what is the opposite of an odd number. Yeah, that's right, it's an even number. So if it says to keep numbers like one, three, five, seven, and so on, what numbers would be our even numbers? What do even numbers end with? Yeah, they end with a two, a four, a six, an eight, or a zero. So we should cross out all of our even numbers. And we call those even because those are numbers that we can share equally between two people. So for example, if I had four apples, I could share those between two people and give each of them two, two apples. But if I had five apples and I gave two people each two apples, I'd still have one left over. That's why five is odd and four is even. So let's go ahead and cross out those even numbers. And that should just leave us with odd numbers now. Did we cross out your estimate? If so, that's okay. We have more information, so go ahead and update your estimates. How many rings are in that pile? All right, did you write down your new estimate? Okay, here's our third clue. The answer does not include the digit one. Does not include the digit one. So let's take a look here. Which number should we cross out? Now I can see in this column here, and remember columns go up and down, rows go side to side. So in this column, I can see that all of these numbers end with a one. So I should go ahead and cross those out because the number does not include the digit one. 
but is there another group of numbers I should be looking to cross out? That's right, this row right here. When we talk about it being the digit one, that means it could be in any of the place values. So if we look at 13, well, we have a three in the ones column, but we have a one in the tens column. So we can cross that number out because it's got a one in it. And all these numbers in the teens start with a one. So let's cross off this column and this row. All right, that leaves us with 16 numbers. Did we cross out your number? If so, go ahead and update your estimates. Go ahead and write it down or tell somebody in the room what your new estimate is. All right, let's take a clue, look at clue number four. The answer does not include the digit five. All right, so we've got to look at the digit five. Do you see any columns we should take out that have, that have the number five in it? Yep, this column right here. Each of these has a five in the ones place, so we'd want to eliminate that column. Are there any rows? that may have a five in the tens column? No, because remember we said that the answer is less than 50. So that takes care of this row here, which all had a five in the tens column. So we're really only looking at eliminating this column. All right, we are down to 12 numbers. Go ahead and update your estimates if you need to. And we'll go ahead and move on to the next clue. All right, our final clue here. The value of the digit in the ones place is less than four. Okay, that means that our final number, the digit in the ones place has to be less than four. So let's look here. The dig what digit do we see in the ones column in this column? Yeah, it's the nine. Is nine less than four? Nope, so we should eliminate that column. How about these numbers? These all have a seven in the ones column. Is seven less than four? No, so we should eliminate that column. How about this one, threes? Are three, is three less than four? That's right, it is. So, since we know that the digit in the ones column is less than four, these are the only numbers that would work. So let's go ahead and cross those out. And these are our final numbers, three, 23, 33, and 43. One of those four numbers is our final answer. So I want you to go ahead, take a look at the picture again. And remember, our numbers are still three, 23, 33, and 43. So 3, 23, 33, and 43. How many rings do you think there are? Go ahead and write down your final guess using those last four numbers. And now what I want you to do is take a few seconds and tell somebody in the room why you chose that number. Why do you think it is the number that you chose? All right, you ready? Let's see the answer. The answer is 33 rings. There are 33 rings there. Did you get it right? Awesome. If not, that's okay. The reason why we do these is to fine tune our estimation skills and to build those muscles in our brain. So um, I'm gonna have some more of these posted later in the week on my website. You can also find them on the specialist side. Um, so keep working on your math. Really looking forward to seeing you guys down the road. Take care.